Hi, Hate Intros, My Hero Academia Season 3. You don't need to worry about Episode 1 because that's just a recap episode and a swimming contest. I hope they don't do this for Season 4, otherwise this video is going to be pointless. Yep, episode 2. Tomoda is discussing the next move with Kuroguri. Kiran arrives to let them know that the shipment from the Union will arrive tomorrow, so it looks like they're planning on something big. The students go on a summer training camp where they meet up with Mandalay, and the other Pussycat member helping with the training, Pixie Bob. For the first test, Pixie makes Earth Monsters for the students to fight off while they walk through the forest to the place where they're going to be staying for the training camp. After that, they meet Kodo, who is an angsty little kid who dislikes heroes because his parents were heroes and died to a villain. Midoriya notices this and seems drawn to changing his mind. Yeah, episode 3. Everyone is working hard on improving their quirks, and we're introduced to the two other members of the Pussycats, Ragdoll, who knows about people just by looking at them, and the fourth member, Tiger, who just fights. While everybody is eating, Kodo slips off to his secret hideout because he doesn't want to associate with any heroes. He still needs to eat, though, so Midoriya goes to bring him some food. Midoriya tries talking to him, but typical angsty kid just tells him off. We get a look at Dobby and the other villains planning to attack the students. They launch their attack during the test of courage, with both Class A and Class B participating. When the attack is launched, Midoriya realizes that Kodo is actually alone in his secret spot. The episode 4. Eraserhead gets word of the attack, but when he goes to help, he is stopped by Dobby. The students in the woods have to find a way to avoid poison smoke while the Pussycats square off against Magne, who is threatening to kill Pixie Bob. Spinner is still clinging to the ideologies of the hero killer, Stain, and ends up getting into a fight with the Pussycat member, Tiger. Midoriya gets to Kodo, who has already ran into one of the villains, Muscular, who is ironically the villain that killed Kodo's parents. Bakugo was out on the test of courage as well, and he was paired up with Todoroki. They both run into the villain, Moonfish, who is playing with the severed arm. <laughs> After a drawn out fight, Midori ends up going all out on Muscular, trying to protect Kota and knocks him unconscious. Kota sees how hard he's trying despite how badly injured he is, which makes him start to come around to the idea of heroes. Episode 5. We find out the villain's main target is Bakugo. Eraser fights off Dobby, but it's actually just a clone made by the other villain twice. Just to be clear, that's his name. He didn't make the clone twice. Eraser runs into Midori and sends a message with him to tell Mandalay that all the students need to protect themselves since they are the ones being targeted. Kota sees that he's been a bit of a douche and wants to apologize to Midoriya. Bakugo and Todoroki continue their fight with Moonfish while Tetsu targets the source of the poison smoke. With the help of Itsuka, they take out the kid responsible and the smoke starts to disperse. While Midoriya is looking for Bakugo, he is intercepted by Shoji. Shoji tells him that they have to figure out what to do about Tokiyami, who lost control of Dark Shadow because it's nighttime. Episode 6. While Midoriya and Shoji are trying to figure out what to do about Dark Shadow, Bakugo and Todoroki are still in a stalemate with Moonfish. Shoji uses his perk to lure Dark Shadow to the ongoing fight, and Dark Shadow subdues Moonfish. They then use the light from a fire to weaken Dark Shadow and calm it down. Ochako gets stabbed in the arm while fighting the blood loving Yandere Himako Toga. Not the typical bodily fluid that girls crave, but Asui and Ochako work together to fight against her. When Midoriya and the others arrive, Toka has to leave, but not before falling in love with your boy. Mr. Capress steals Bakugo and Tokoyami with his perk and then runs away. Momo makes a tracker and they manage to get it on the Nomu who attacked them. Midoriya, Shoji, and Todoroki use Ochako's power to slingshot and tackle Mr. Capress, but they land in front of all the villains. Oi, 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 oi. Episode 7. The three of them fight with the villains to try and get Bakugo and Tokoyami back. They managed to get back one of the orbs, which was Tokoyami, but the villains still managed to get Bakugo. In the aftermath, 15 students were in serious condition from the gas, Pixie Bob took a shot to the head and is in serious condition, and Ragdoll lost a lot of blood and is missing. Muscular Mustard and Moonfish were the only villains captured. The media comes at UA harder than ever for the recent failures. There also might be a spy in the pro hero group because nobody knew about the training camp except for the select teachers. Class A stops by to see Midoriya when he wakes up. Kirishima overheard All Might talking with Momo about the tracker she put on the Nomu and suggests having her make another one so that they can go and get Bakugo back. Episode 8. Midoriya learns that if he injures his arms this badly two or three more times, his arms are going to stop working. The cops rally the troops for the mission to get Bakugo back with heroes including Endeavor, Best Genus, Gang Orca, Grand Torino, Tiger, I guess the other Pussycats were too irrelevant, lol, Kamui Woods, and Mountain Lady. Midoriya, Todoroki, Momo, and Kirishima decide to try and retrieve Bakugo without fighting. Because the school's reputation is on the line, he needs to ensure that there isn't any fighting, so Ida goes along too. Once they get their disguises, they start heading over to go get Bakugo. Tomoda tries convincing Bakugo to join the villains. Bakugo refuses and gives him a good smack that cancels out his face palm. Episode 9. We get a quick look at Tomoda's master all for one. Meanwhile, Midori and the others find the hideout that the tracker led them to, and when they look inside, they find a bunch of Nomus. The pro heroes who had the actual location of Bakugo launch their attack on the village and quickly restrain them. Mountain Lady and Best Genus end up assaulting the Nomu hideout where Midori is and secure the Nomos and the missing hero Ragdoll. It looks like a clean win, but then portals deliver a bunch of Nomos who help the villains fight back. Bakugo ends up getting taken by one of the portals. We jump back a couple of minutes with Best Genus and Mountain Lady being approached by a mysterious figure and try to restrain him. Episode 10. The heroes are forced to fight against the Nomus, then All Might leaves to go help Genus and the Amazonian who were taken out by All for One. 
Bakugo and the villains are all transported there using the portals. All Might shows up but can't get to Bakugo because All For One is keeping him busy. All For One opens a portal for the rest of the villains to escape. They are trying to capture Bakugo before they leave but Midori and the others use a plan to save him. All For One forces the villains to escape but stays behind to cover the retreat. The episode 11. We get some flashbacks of All Might's master, Nana Shimura, who was killed by All For One. We also find out that the villain Tomura is the grandson of Shimura. The public finally see All Might's true form because he can't maintain his muscle form in the fight against All For One. All For One has been trying to soften him up until now but prepares to deliver the final blow. All Might has to expend the remainder of his powers to subdue All For One in his final mission as the number one hero. Sarabata. One for all. The episode 12. We learned that Shimura put her son into foster care to protect him after her husband was killed and that's how All For One was able to get to him. In response to the recent incident, the school sets up a new dorm system for the students to help keep them safe. Eraser and All Might go to the students' houses to help convince the parents of the students to let them stay in the dorms. Everyone seems on board until Midori's mom says no, but after some convincing from All Might, she comes around to the idea. The episode 13. The students all move into their new dorms. The principal states that it's also possible for there to be a spy amongst the students as well. The rest of the episode is just a filler of them showing off how they decorated their rooms. The episode 14. With the students officially moved into the dorms, they have to start thinking about getting their provisional hero license. To help them prepare for the test, the teachers help them come up with new ultimate moves. Midoriya goes with Ida and Uraraka to make some modifications to their suits. They meet with Power Loader, who's going to be doing the modifications along with the help of one of his students, Mei Hatsume. While doing this, Midori doesn't come up with a new ultimate move, but he does decide to switch to using his legs instead of his arms to fight. The episode 15. Everyone arrives at the provisional license test where they compete with other schools for the licenses. They meet with some of the schools that they're going to be competing against and after are told what the first competition is. Of the 1,540 applicants, only 100 will make it through to the next round. Each contestant has three targets put on them, and if the three targets get hit with playing balls, then they are out, and they need to eliminate two people to advance. One of the traditions at the provisional license exam is for all the other schools to gang up on UA at the beginning. When the game starts, Todoroki goes off by himself and Bakugo goes with Kirishima. Everyone else ends up getting surrounded by all the other schools. The episode 16. Yoshindo crumbles the ground beneath Yue and in the chaos he gets separated. Inasu Yorashi uses his wing quirk to steal a bunch of balls and pelts everybody beneath him, knocking out 120 people, which makes him the first to advance. Kami Utsushimi can turn invisible and hits one of Midoriya's targets. I was rooting for Midoriya, but I don't know, after seeing this, I kind of want her to win. Before it can go any further, they get interrupted by a group of students. Midoriya saves Uraraka, but knows she's actually a fake in disguise. The real Uraraka and Seto show up to help him fight off the fake. Todoroki, who is still by himself, ends up getting targeted by Seijin High School students, who share my ability to make their small things grow. The episode 17. Todoroki outplays the Senshin students and is the first UA student to make it through to the next round. Usui, Jiro, Momo, and Shoji are trapped in a room by the Seiya Academy students and are being frozen. Momo makes some big brand plays, creating an amp and headphones, which allows Jiro to emit a high-frequency attack, disabling them and letting all four advance to the next round. Kirishima gets turned into a blob by Seiji Shishikura, so Bakugo has to start fighting with him. Midoriya, Uraraka, and Seto are still being chased by Ketsubutsu students. Episode 18. Bakugo falls for a trap and is turned into a blob also, leaving just Kaminari left to fight. He uses a new move with the equipment he got from Power Loader to take down Seiji. All of the other people who were turned into blobs turn back, and the three of them have to fight them off, but end up making it through to the next round. Bakugo, Uraraka, and Shoji set up their own trap, which secures them going into the next round. With not many spots left, Aoyama shoots his naval laser into the air, which rallies the rest of the UA students for one big showdown, where all of them make it through to round two. The episode 19. For stage two, the battleground from stage one is blown up and people act like victims that need to be saved. Students get points deducted if they handle a situation in the wrong way. Everyone is doing pretty well until Gengorka shows up to play a villain attacking the city. The episode 20 is a filler episode that happened over summer vacation. The episode 21. It's revealed that another big part of how they're being graded is cooperation. Gengorka starts to move but is intercepted by Todoroki and Inasa. Their attacks cancel each other out and they won't coordinate because Inasa hates Todoroki and his dad. After getting messed up by Gengorka and yelled at by Midoriya, they put their differences aside and coordinate to trap Gengorka in a fiery tornado. With the evacuations finishing up, the others come to help with the fight, but the test ends before any real blows can land. The names of the passing students are posted, but we don't see those until next episode. Hey, episode 22. The list is revealed and everybody passes except for Bakugo, Todoroki, and Inasa. Inasa comes over to apologize for making Todoroki fail, and Todoroki also apologizes. They still don't seem to like each other, but they're on okay terms. Luckily, their failing students can still get their license once they take a three-month course. Now that they have their license, students can conduct hero work during emergency situations only. We find out that the girl who turned into Uraraka and fought with Midoriya was actually the villain Toga. Her quirk is that she can transform into anybody she wants after she ingests their blood. 
While fighting with Midori, she managed to get some of his blood, so keep that in mind for the future. All for one is being held in a prison, but doesn't seem like he's intending on staying there long. Bakugo figured out that Midori got his power from All Might because Ragdoll lost her quirk to All for One. Since he found out that quirks could be passed down and taken, he figures that's what happened with Midori. In the last scene, he gets Midori alone and challenges him to a fight. Episode 23. Midoriya, of course, doesn't want to fight, but Bakugo attacks anyways, forcing a defense. It's revealed that Bakugo feels responsible for All Might losing his powers because he got kidnapped. These feelings have reached a boiling point, so he's fighting as a coping mechanism. Midoriya fights back in an attempt to make him feel better and ends up losing. All Might had overheard them, and it comes out to explain that Bakugo isn't responsible for him losing his powers. Bakugo agrees to keep the secret, and both of them get house arrest and cleaning duties as punishment for fighting. Episode 24 In light of All Might's retirement, crime activity has been slowly getting worse. We get a little backstory on the villain twice. His quirk allows him to duplicate things, so he made a bunch of clones of himself, and they all got into a fight over who the real one was and killed each other. Now he isn't sure if he's actually the real one, and he hears voices. We get a glance at some of the new villains on the move. The students will be able to participate in another program like the intern one, but have more to do with hero work. And finally, we meet the third years who are at the top of the school, also known as the Big Three. Episode 25. The Big Three are there to talk about the program since they took part in it. Meteo decides that fighting everybody at the same time will help with his explanation and ultimately make it faster. He can go through any object and uses this to make quick work of the class. Midoriya is the only one to even come close to landing a blow, and Meteo says that Sir might like him. After the fight, he monologues a bit about the program, and we are introduced to Sir, who was tracking the villain from earlier, Overhaul. The League of Villains is trying to recruit Overhaul, who apparently is pretty strong. With both sides ramping up, only time will tell who's going to come out on top. It's Midoriya. Midoriya's gonna win. I don't know. I was just trying to do an epic outro.